We want to show you our process for sound testing suppressors and fill you in on an exciting upcoming video series. Decibel testing and decibel ratings for suppressors can be confusing, if not downright controversial, because there's no industry standard for the testing process. There is a military standard, but it hasn't been adopted by the industry, and probably for good reason. When testing for sounds that could damage your hearing, we're looking at a peak decibel measurement. Without getting too far into the weeds on that, it's pretty safe to empirically say the higher that peak dB number is, the more uncomfortable it is for your hearing. There's so many factors that can affect peak dB, such as the reflective surfaces near the measuring device, uh, environmental factors such as the temperature, humidity, and elevation, of course, all the different hosts we can put our suppressors on, the cartridges they're chambered in, and even each individual specific load can affect that measurement. So because of all these ever-changing variables, we don't find assigning a rating to a specific suppressor based on peak dB to be very useful, but we will show you testing data in context. We find the best way to contextualize these tests is to shoot different suppressors on the same day under the most identical circumstances that we can manage. Of course, this still isn't a perfect system, but it does allow us to test our products, share some of the results with you, and allow you to draw your own conclusions without us publishing some arbitrary figures about the average performance of our products. So without further ado, let me tell you a little bit about our testing process. So up until recently, we were using the venerable and well-known B&K 2270 sound analyzer. This is a portable device, but one of the big drawbacks is it only had one probe, meaning we can only record or gather sound data from one location. So because of this limitation, we found the best place to put this device was what we called mid-gun. We didn't want to put it up to the muzzle, where it's not going to give us a good indication of what it's like for the shooter at their ear, and we didn't want to put it all the way back at the shooter's ear uh, and fail to encompass what it's like to stand around the shooter while the gun's being shot. And this was useful, and that's what we've used in videos past. We've since upgraded, and moving forward, we'll be using the BNK 3052 Pulse Analyzer. What makes this so great is the sample rate is so much higher. This means that it can take more samples of data a lot faster, so it can find that highest spike, that peak dB rating, a lot easier uh, than a device like the 2270. It also records more frequencies, a wider range of frequencies than any other device available to us right now. It is a really expensive instrument, costing tens of thousands of dollars, but we want to make sure that we have the best data that we can use to develop better products to protect your hearing. Another great advantage to the 3052 is the input device allows us to use three probes. Right now we're only using two. We may find a place to put that third device moving forward. But let's get into how we set this up. So first we're gonna put the B&K probes in the cradles that were provided to us. And we're gonna put those on tripods in specific positions. One probe we're gonna put level with the muzzle, one meter to the left. We did borrow this from the military standard. We figure if we're going to choose an arbitrary distance away from the muzzle to put this thing, we might as well use one that's well known to the industry. The other probe is going 25 centimeters from the shooter's right ear. We selected the right ear because that's the side that the port is on in semi-automatics. We wanna make sure we're gathering the most valuable data for hearing protection. Once we have our probes set up where we like them, we're gonna hook them up to the input 
and start BNK's proprietary software. And they protect it with a USB key. You can't even start it up without this key and hooking it up to the internet. Finally, before we can begin testing, we need to calibrate the probes and make sure they're working like they're supposed to. BNK provided this calibrator with the unit uh, that you put over each probe and it emits a tone that has a decibel and frequency reading uh, that the device is going to make sure matches what it's expecting. Now that the impulse analyzer is calibrated, it's time to shoot. We do have a rod in front of our bench rest uh, in order to make sure that the muzzle is at the same location with each shot we take. And in the interest of trying to shoot these different suppressors under the most identical conditions possible, we may cool the host off in between each evolution to make sure that they're starting on equal footing. In order to provide you with the best data, we're gonna set up the camera in a way that captures the suppressor, the host, the probe, and the laptop displaying the peak dB data all in the same shot. What you're gonna be hearing the audio on is this Rode VideoMic Pro. It isn't the most expensive, fancy studio mic in the world. However, it is a really high quality uh, condenser mic and it does have Pro in the name, so it must be pretty good, right? It is a relatively simple testing process, but we do feel it provides some valuable context as the way these cans perform. So this is gonna be the standard format for our testing moving forward, and we're gonna to continue to release versus videos where we show cans shooting head to head in the most uh, identical circumstances that we can manage outside of the laboratory setting. Now, we're also gonna look at things like point of impact shift and heat transference. So if you can think of any other things that you'd like to have compared or to look at in these tests, uh, let us know down in the comments and we'll do the best we can uh, to find an appropriate and fair way uh, to show that in our videos. Otherwise, we'll see you in the field or on the range sometime.